we get on. We can maybe stall for a minute. Boom. And we're live. Hey, hey what's guys. up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to the journey within. This is a journey of deconstruction and reconstruction of a death and rebirth. Today, I'm very excited to have Odysseus, who is a trauma and shadow work coach, and he's very passionate about this topic. And so, dude, I'm 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 excited. Well, like, let's get into this. Yeah, I'm ready, man. I'm really excited to be here. First off, I want to just thank you for uh, um, having me on here and creating awareness around what I feel is a very important topic today. Because, uh, you know, five years ago, if you talked about trauma, people were like, what are you talking about trauma? I don't want to talk about that. But with yeah, it and everything going on right now, I think it's a very important topic. And there's a lot of, um, we'll get into a more like intergenerational trauma that runs people's lives unconsciously. So yeah. as you mentioned, very passionate about sharing this information and creating awareness around this very important topic. So thank you so much for having me on today, man. And I'm really grateful that we met. Dude, same. Thank you. Um, and th this will just be like an um, uh, informal you know, conversation interview. You know, um, that's interesting that actually, don't know if you have any insight on this, but what do you think has gotten the um, topic of trauma and healing trauma out into like the mainstream well i mean i think that uh like that's the positive side effect of covid is that people yeah. are stuck in their homes and they can't distract themselves so much by just being out in the world and just like keeping themselves busy with everything going on in the external world so they're stuck in their homes and uh the unconscious stuff the generational trauma the wounds that they haven't examined they're coming to the surface in their minds and uh, I think, like I said, that's the positive side effect because it's been buried so deeply within our unconscious that yeah. we have to acknowledge our own pain. And the greatest way to heal ourselves is to, is to acknowledge our pain. Like I like to say, if if you cut your leg, you wouldn't just let yourself bleed out, right? You, you know what I mean? You'd, you'd acknowledge it and you'd heal it. But some people, they're, this is where I want to say I have a lot of compassion for people when it comes to trauma work because they're unconscious to how much it's actually running their lives. I personally used to be upset like why don't you like because I, I come from the fitness background he's like why don't you exercise why don't you eat healthy why don't you yep. take care of yourself but people are unconsciously carrying on generational trauma so they're not even aware and so back to your what you said is it's really um that's the beautiful side of of uh COVID is it's actually forced people to go a little bit deeper into themselves and understand what's really going on below the surface in their minds that could be running their life it's like why do i keep attracting abusive people why do i keep having these same relationships why do i why am i not having the most fulfilling life that i deserve i love saying that to people you deserve to have a fulfilling life but if your unconscious is running your life why would it show up for you? You know what I'm saying? I want to make it fun because this is a deep topic, but I, I love to make it fun for people to talk about it. Yes. No, that's, that, I'm glad you mentioned that because it is, yeah, it is a very heavy topic, trauma. Ooh, heavy. Um, but no, dude, I think you really do make it fun. And um, man, if, if, if that's, that's actually part of the process, right? Like if we can actually start to have a little fun, poke a little fun, um, it's even like a pattern interrupt, you know? And it just makes the whole process of healing way easier, for sure. Yeah. So um, so when you say trauma, because I think people have a certain connotation of trauma. I think it's like, oh, it's like PTSD, you know, coming from the military or something. But when you say trauma, what do you mean? So trauma, like there's, there's different ways to approach that, right? So there's like mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual trauma. It's the stuff that happens to us when we're a child. You know, you're neglected as a child. You had physical abuse. Uh, sexual abuse is definitely one of them. And like, you don't have anybody to talk to about it. But the main thing, and also I want to say that it's intergenerational. Sometimes you inherit like, uh, drinking problems that come down through your, your parents and they were abusive, but they didn't know how to handle their trauma. Like we didn't even know what PTSD was until 1980. Like I really feel that we are on the beginning stages of even beginning to understand the psychology of humans and how trauma runs our lives. That's why I'm so passionate about this. But the main thing with trauma is trauma, I'm going to slow down here, it's so important. Yeah. Trauma is not what happens to you. It's the residue within you that runs your life. And it's just energy that is stuck. There's no such thing as a bad or a good emotion. There are only stuck emotions. And the reason why I'm so passionate about talking about this, and my, my vision is to build a tribe of coaches and healers where we can talk about this and start sharing this wisdom with more people, is because we need to have space to talk about that residue. And the residue is really just energy. When we access those repressed, suppressed, and denied emotions, that sets us free. Because like I like to blend Chinese medicine, like Taoist healing principles with this, because it's stuck energy that's actually below the surface. And 
we don't look at it, we don't talk about it. And then the more we repress it, it's like that wounded child within us. It begins to actually run our lives because we're not acknowledging it. And when mm. we do acknowledge it, that energy gets freed up. And now we have more freedom to show up more authentically as we were always meant to be. And that's why I love talking about this. But um, the freedom, the liberation that people get when they finally heal their trauma, it's like after, like, it's like you break your arm and you're like, you can't use your arm for months, and it finally heals. You get your arm back. The feeling, like I'd snap my Achilles tendon. I was playing basketball in Tokyo, Japan, and I snapped my Achilles tendon. Talk about trauma, right? That's some serious physical trauma. I had to relearn how to walk again. But the feeling when I was able to walk again, it, like, it made me appreciate walking so much more. And so I think that that's part of what people need to realize. Like They're limping around unconsciously, and it's because their trauma is running their lives, and they're not even fully aware of how it's running their lives. Yeah, and so this... This poses a question of how do we know if we have trauma, you know, because if it's, it, if it isn't conscious, how do we know that we have this stuck energy in this trauma? Totally, totally. Cause it, it is unconscious. Let me turn off my AC unit real quick. Sure. No problem. Like just blowing in the background super loud. Um, so how do we know? The key thing is like like one of the challenges that we're suffering from, the reason why we're, we're having a difficult time accessing our trauma or acknowledging it is because we're living in a really linear, third dimensional, masculine reality, which isn't a bad thing, but it doesn't allow us to be intuitive. It's really about tuning into our emotions. We live in a society that don't feel your emotions, get back to work. Here's a pill. Don't feel those things. Just keep working harder. Everything is going to be fine. And then when you retire, you'll die three years later because you never acknowledged your pain. And it's like, and, and like, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about like my trauma growing up in the film industry. There's like a huge strike going on right now. Um, but like the main thing is like, you need to look for the thread. Okay. Once you find the thread, you're, oh, like, what is that? And you keep pulling it down to, down to the actual root cause of the problem. Because most of Western medicine is only working with effects. We're giving people drugs, opiates to numb the pain. And like one of the problems, like, I'm not saying Western medicine is bad or good, but we're over drugging people. And then when we don't feel our emotions, we can't actually heal them because the emotions is just essentially repressed energy deep within us. And so that's why we need to have more conversations. Most doctors are not trauma informed. Most therapists, like I'm not saying like all therapists are bad or good, but a lot of them, like you're just talking about it. Like I've worked with therapists, like we talked about it, nothing actually healed. You know, that's why we need to have more trauma informed people in society because my, essentially my goal as a coach is, and just as a, as a soul in this physical body experiencing this reality is to move for a from a trauma based society to a trauma-informed society. We need to have spaces where people can feel comfortable talking about their pain, talking about their trauma, because that's how we actually heal. And so to come back to your point, is that you need to look at your triggers. What's triggering you? Who are the people triggering you? Often it's the people that you love the most that trigger you because you really care about them. It could be even TV shows or different things in your life. Once you get triggered, you have to get curious. That's the key thing is get curious because it's really the first step with any, any coach will tell you the first step to change is awareness. If you don't have awareness, you will not be able to change. So you have to acknowledge like what's triggering me and what behaviors are showing up. Because once you start like, why do I keep sabotaging myself? Like you get triggered and you go right back to eating sugar or using drugs or drinking alcohol or gambling or, or being abusive towards people that we love. Because what we'll do, and this is possibly one of the most important things that I'll share today, is that until you've integrated your shadow and integrated your, your trauma and your pain and your wounds, you will unconsciously relive your childhood traumas through other people and the people that you love. And that is why it is so important that we do this work. And then one of the things I love about teaching shadow work is that when people, that you have to do shadow work, which is acknowledging the shadow, working with it, and then you integrate the shadow, and then you awaken your shadow. It's a three-step process. I made it sound really simple. It could take months to do all that. But... Um, once you do that, you will be able to recognize other people projecting their shadow onto you. This is what makes your relationships with your mother, your father, your wife, your kids, your friends, your coworkers so much better because you recognize your triggers. And when you recognize your triggers, then the old behaviors, the traumas don't keep running your life unconsciously. You go, oh, I was triggered. Those old thoughts are coming up, but why? And when you start to shift the why, then the emotions change. When the emotions change, the behaviors change. And I want you to know, I'm really oversimplifying this. This does, this does take time. That's why it's really good to have a coach or get support. Like I'm building group coaching programs where you have people come together and talk about their stuff because we need to have space where people can share their wounds because if we don't share our wounds, we keep it bottled up. It runs our lives. This is why I love talking about Chinese medicine too. I know I'm going off on kind of a tangent here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, um, but when we repress our emotions, like I'm super keen to like Chinese medicine and the five elements is that 
emotions when they're repressed they actually cause disease within the body like if you repress anger it shows up in the liver like all people are drinking because they're repressing their anger it's huge especially with men repressing their anger drinking problems you get liver problems and then heart in heart your heart is joy or lack of joy what's the leading killer in america heart disease right i think every mm. i'm actually giving a speech tomorrow to this corporation I'm going to talk about uh, disease. And like every 40 seconds, someone dies from a heart, heart related matter. Then your kidneys are associated with fear. There's a lot of fear going on in the world today, right? Your lungs are associated with grief and your stomach is associated with anxiety. So the more you repress these emotions, they actually show up in these different yin and yang aspects. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but there's different energies where like it's the one organs out, it could be another organ. So learning how to understand how emotions that are repressed and suppressed actually affect and cause disease within the body is so powerful. Powerful because most of Western medicine doesn't acknowledge our emotions. Like, oh, you're feeling something? Well, we'll give you an antidepressant. We'll give you an anti-anxiety pill. Like, you don't need all these anti-anxiety pills. Like, I'm not saying that all drugs are bad, but if you're constantly using antidepressant, maybe you need to go into the depression and feel it and acknowledge it and, and work with it. And that's what's actually going to heal you. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure you the study where um, they had adverse child experiences, ACEs. Mm -hmm. and they had the correlation between trauma, adverse child experiences, and this is just even like, say, like divorce or just, yes. you know, not a lack of love, whatever it is, not not having that emotional awareness that the parents uh, need for the child and just correlating that to people who have literal diseases like physical illnesses. Yeah. There's actual like a direct correlation between the two, which is crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at like all the different, that, that's the thing that, that blows my mind, because like, I only really got into Chinese medicine in the last year, but I'm just like, oh my god, like, this is why people are getting so sick, it's because of the emotions. And like, I personally believe that the future of medicine, the future of healing, the future of health, is working with our emotions and our nervous system, because people are hard, hardwired right? Because your nervous system is like an electrical system, right? People are hardwired and actually addicted to their pain. Like you, if you're repressing anger, you will mm -hmm. unconsciously look for people like that thing's making me angry. Hey, you're making me angry. It's like, no, 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 bro. You were already angry and you were seeking things externally to justify your anger. So you could feel those emotions and you're addicted to it. That's why like, you get like, I, I don't want to like, like hate on older generations, but older generations, they didn't know a lot of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so they're so addicted to it that it's like embedded in their psyche. And that's why like, I really want to work with more younger, younger generation. I'm not going to work with anybody, but teaching younger generations, emotional intelligence. Cause a lot of stuff that I know now, if I'd known this when I was a kid, I would have had a lot less depression. I would have had a lot less stress. I would have loved myself more, but it's really comes back to the point where we're unconsciously, let me say it again, unconsciously addicted to our pain because we don't have these conversations and this is why i feel that the future of medicine health healing is really coming down to working with our emotions and, and really working with our nervous system because so many people are stuck in fight or flight mode today it's ridiculous yeah. and they're not yeah. where they are. like i have to keep working harder i can bury my pain and just keep working hard give me a, give me a, pop, a pill i'll drink some alcohol just and they're they're repressing 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 and then they have to, they get sick and they're like why am i getting sick doc take this pill and then take this pill and they, they're not actually healing and I say that with so much compassion because I, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. But that's why these conversations that we're having right now can be some of the most healing conversations in the world. Because you can't make somebody change. They have to make the realization within themselves and go, oh, maybe I have been repressing my emotions. Maybe I need to examine this deeper. Maybe I need to get some support. Maybe hire a coach. Maybe get somebody who can be a mirror to see the things I can't see within myself. Yeah. So it's all about compassion, man. It is. It is. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the nervous system. Because the more I study trauma and just like looking at myself. And this is why talk therapy only goes so far. I'm not saying it, it, it can be helpful for sure. I'm a big fan of um, psychodynamic traditions and, and there are useful things in every single uh, modality, right? But it doesn't address the nervous system, which when, when we're talking about trauma, it seems like that's like the first step. So what, what are some ways that we can start to like regulate our, our nervous system? Well, first off, it's, it comes back to, like I said, awareness. Yeah recognizing our triggers but then like some of the stuff that i teach is meditations breath work exercise like I, I come from a fitness background i've built two gyms in my life and like i know that i help people with their nervous system through, through exercise and movement because it moves the energy through the body but specifically breath work and doing like holotropic breath work which is to, to make to create wholeness because the word heal means to make whole Right. So you really want to like find the areas within yourself. Like sometimes people have pain that shows up in the body in certain areas 
and they're doing all kinds of treatments, but it's really about calming the nervous system down because the body has an innate ability to heal itself. We've gotten so far away from that. That's why I'm so keen to studying Eastern medicine because it's really the body, it's all about creating a, uh, a state of homeostasis where our body is calm enough to heal itself. If you're constantly running yourself ragged, your body can't calm itself down because you're so addicted to fight or flight mode. You really want to get in a deep space of rest and recovery mode. And when we get into that space, the body will find natural alignment within itself. Your nervous system can calm down, like your chakras and everything kind of really activate. Sometimes they're out of balance. I know Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this as well. I don't know if you studied his work. But um, but a lot of it is like addiction to lower vibrational emotions. And this is actually measurable. If you're addicted to anger, guilt, shame, sadness, it's a very lower vibrational frequency. And then getting yourself out of that space where you're more into a state of bliss, gratitude, appreciation, abundance, that completely shifts your entire reality. It doesn't just happen like that. It takes time to actually get into that space because you want to calm down yourself being in fight or flight mode and really get into that rest and recovery mode. It's like really about activating your parasympathetic nervous system. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So let's say um, we, we've done that. We, we've done the breath work. We're calming, regulating our nervous system. We're aware of these triggers. Is that sufficient to address the trauma and heal? Well, I think it's really relative depending on the person and their experience yeah. what's showing up for them. Because some stuff, some people, you know, it might take them a few weeks to really get through the healing process. Some people a couple months, sometimes a couple years, because sometimes it's intergenerational. It's very deep. Right. So it's going to be it's going to be relative to the individual and their experience, because if you have some intergenerational trauma, it may take longer time. It's like you don't just like work out three times, and then you're in fit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to just you got to have a regular practice of doing the breath work, of doing the breath work, because it's like you're shedding layers. And sometimes like with shadow work, you're working on this thing over here and you're working with your shadows like, oh, there's something over there that my shadow has been hiding from me. You got to go over here and figure out that thing. So that's what I mean. There's no like like this is it. That's not like. There's not like a set box where it's like just inside this box, this is what you have to do. It's going to be a little bit different for each person, right? And so it's really about getting in touch with your intuition and, like I said before, feeling your emotions. So many people in society are repressing, suppressing, and denying our emotions. And that doesn't allow us access to heal because we're suppressing the energy that actually allows us to heal. But it's going to be, it's really relative per person, but it's about acknowledging your pain. Like I said before, you wouldn't let yourself bleed out because you're going to bleed on the people that you love. It's really about acknowledging the pain and going deeper into your own healing process. And it's about having rituals. I always say your rituals create your riches. Your rituals create your riches. Just like exercising every day. What things do you do on a regular basis? I, I teach breath work classes regularly because like we got to keep doing the work to calm our nervous system down to get in that space. Because when we get into that space, like I love to say that when you do shadow work, instead of your shadow being back here saying you're not good enough. You're not worthy of love. Money doesn't grow on trees. You'll be poor like your parents and your grandparents. You'll never have money. You're not worth it. <laughs> Dude, I wish our shadows were that like that funny, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I, like I, said, I do my best to make it funny. But it's like yeah. this voice in the back of the head. And it's kind of like you're like, you're like, wait a second. What is that voice coming from? And then you turn around and you shine a light on it. And the shadow goes, oh, oh you caught me. Oh, oh. It's like, and like, shadow, what do you need? Like, uh, I just want to be acknowledged. I was five and you were wounded and you never acknowledged mm. my pain. And and you actually talk to that part of you that's wounded. You acknowledge it. It goes, oh, you're acknowledging me now? And you might have to sit with it for a couple months because you acknowledge, didn't acknowledge it for so long. And then when you acknowledge it and you start to bring that energy back online, then your shadow goes, now that you've acknowledged me, I'm going to be your ally. And now instead of having your shadow sabotaging you from behind the scenes back here. This, ah, you are not worthy of love. Like this like demon in the back of your head. It becomes your ally. And like, this is actually, there's um, a technique that I, uh, I share with people. It's um, called feeding your demons. It's an exercise where you actually, you acknowledge, because when I say demon, it's not like an actual demon. It's like your repressed emotion becomes your demon. Right. Mm. It's like it's like repressed, suppressed and denied emotions. They're repressed. So they're running your life unconsciously. When you acknowledge them, then they become your ally. This is what people like don't understand when it comes to like the unconscious mind. It's, it really takes time to understand these concepts because just repressed energy. I read a book by uh, Charlie Morlay reading uh, Dreaming Through Darkness, an amazing book on shadow work. One of the things that he said is that 90 percent of your shadow is pure gold. 
pure gold. Be like, oh, what's the shadow? It sounds scary. I don't want to look at my shadow, guys. It's like, no, 90% of your shadow is pure gold. It's just sifting through the 10% of darkness. So when I tell people when I, when I work with them in shadow work, I'm going to hand you a shovel, show you where to dig, how to dig, and what's going to come up when you're digging, but the digging you must do yourself. But when you do the digging, you will find the gold and you will be able to acknowledge your oppressed pain, bring it back online. And like I said, instead of your shadow sabotaging you, it will become your ally and allow you to heal mm-hmm. yourself in ways we can't even put into words because you feel it so deep in your soul. That's where the difference between Western medicine, which is about, like I said, I don't want to hate on Western medicine, but it's about drugging, burning, and cutting things out of the body. Eastern medicine. It's about connecting you to your soul so you can heal yourself. Yeah. And you just reminded me of this uh, Rumi quote, and hopefully I can get this. But, uh, well, he, he says a lot about pain, but one of the things he said was, I can remember, um, the answer to the pain is within the pain. Yes. And that's what it reminded me of, man. Yeah. The gold is in there. It is. It is. Yeah. We just live. This is, the, this is the thing. Like, like I said before, like even I used to struggle, like just to share, be a little vulnerable about my own story yeah. with shadow work. Cause it's good to, if you're going to coach people, you got to tell about your, you know, I would say your shit becomes your fertilizer. You know, your mess becomes your message. So it's not a bad thing. The more we talk about these things, it allows us to actually heal. So like for me, um, my father worked in Hollywood and he was a really successful filmmaker in Hollywood. But uh, I had abandonment issues from my dad being gone so much when I was a child. And we talked about this. We worked on this. And so it created anger and it created fear from having my father gone so much as a child growing up. And so, like, for years, I, I let that stuff run my life. I, I've kind of fueled myself on anger and fear. It wasn't until I acknowledged the anger, acknowledged the fear, acknowledged the abandonment that I was really able to heal myself. But you have to acknowledge those, that pain and those wounds. And so going into that space allowed me to feel so much more freedom, so much more liberation, that I was actually caught creating my own pain by not feeling those things. And it's, it's, it's part of our society that tells you don't feel it, don't feel it, just bury it, just bury it. But that's like we live in a society, to be brutally honest, that uh, your your health has become a commodity. The sicker you are, the better it is for the economy. Good job. You're sick. Go buy more expensive drugs. Wow, look at the cost of health care. It's so high. Get sicker. And like that's why like, I'm, I, I love talking about this because we need to get serious about it. Part of the reason why people can't see the darkness externally is because we're not facing our internal darkness. As within, so without. It's one of the um, universal principles of, of, of how our body, minds, and hearts work together. So we need to acknowledge what's, no, what's going on internally, and then we'll be able to acknowledge what's really going on externally. Because most people, this isn't even my opinion, like I'm, I'm like, I've read this in multiple books. Society is living in an unconscious state. We're like literally, like I don't know if anybody studied G.I. Gurdjieff's work from 100 years ago. One of the things that he said is most people are living in a wakeful state of sleep. They're walking around, they're eating, they're drinking, they're sleeping, but they're not even fully conscious of how much the shadow realm is running their lives. When I say shadow realm, it's just those repressed emotions because we don't talk about it. And it's not, and everything I'm saying, it's not a bad or a good thing. Shakespeare said, there's nothing good or bad, only thinking makes it so. And like I mentioned, there's no such thing as a good or a bad emotion, only stuck emotions. So there's many people, like the stuff we're talking about in this interview, People aren't talking about it, and that's why we're so unconscious. And it's not a good or a bad thing. It's like, to me, it's a beautiful thing because we have the, all the tools sitting in front of us to heal ourselves. It's just having more groups, having more tribe, having more people coming together and acknowledging the pain so we can move through the pain. Like you said with that Rumi quote, it's going through the pain. And I love to say that um, the path is the medicine. When you start walking the path, the path is the medicine. And it's really, like I said, it comes back to acknowledging our emotions, healing our nervous system, and then you can show up fully authentically, loving yourself and your family and your friends with, with like so much more authenticity and love and gratitude and appreciation because you did the work. This is what we talk about like in psychology. Are you doing the work? Alchemy. Are you doing the work? This is the work that we're talking about that actually heals you. And the thing I love most, actually, I'm kicking off uh, my group coaching program soon and my cousin just joined and she was like, yeah, we're, yeah. Healing, our, we're healing our bloodline because I'm like, yeah, because we're doing it. We're going to heal our bloodline because time is time backwards as you admit it's really about energy when you heal yourself you have the capacity to heal your entire bloodline i'm gonna say that again when you heal yourself you will heal your bloodline you will heal generations past because you're doing the work because it's just energy when you like that that stuff that you're holding on to from your great 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 grandpa from he went to war and like had all this pain and he buried it into his unconscious and then just passed on for generation, generation. You have the ability and the tools. We have it all sitting in front of us. We're just not talking about it. And that's why like, I'm so passionate about teaching this stuff and creating a, a, a mass awakening, but it's not a mass awakening. We're awake. We're, we're acknowledging the sleep. Society's just deep asleep. Mm-hmm. And as we acknowledge the sleep, then we wake and we awake. Cause people are like, are you woke, bro? Are you woke? No, 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 no one's awoke. 
we're asleep and when we realize we're asleep then we can start like opening our oh man i'm I'm gonna sleep like (laughs) yeah man no i love that analogy because you know i you know i work with hypnosis and essentially yeah you could say that the world is in a mass hypnosis of just going about their day so well so you mentioned um this awakening and the shadow awakening i know you mentioned those three levels could you go through those again and and maybe walk us through like how do you go from one level to the next like what does that entail so the way i explain to people and then like actually i i i I drew a little picture can i share a picture with you yeah yeah in fact i will do this i'm gonna remove myself cool so i actually use this to explain shadow work to people hopefully you guys can see this here and then do this real quick and simply quite simply let me get my pen out it's like one of the first things that i teach to people because people learn best with pictures and essentially our our, uh our subconscious mind works with pictures better too. So what happens is we have three different levels of the mind. We have the conscious, the subconscious, and the unconscious. So when I explain shadow work, what we're actually doing with people is we're helping them to recognize what's going on subconsciously and unconsciously so they can actually heal. Hopefully that light's not distracting from the mind. My lovely stick figure picture. So what happens is, is people are consciously trying, trying or doing their best to accomplish their goals. But what's going on is they're actually fighting the current of the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind only works with images. So if you have a burnt image deep in your subconscious mind where I'm not good enough, money doesn't grow on trees, I'm not worthy of love. If you have these stories, you're going to be like rowing really hard, using lots of energy, fighting this current of the subconscious mind. Okay. And what happens is you're burning yourself out. Let me say it again. You're burning yourself out, fighting this current. So you're trying to accomplish your goal, lose weight, get in shape, find true love, make more money, whatever it is. You're going to burn yourself out. Now, what we what we do here is this is the first step. We have to work with the subconscious mind, okay? And then as we start to shift this current, then we start to recognize some people, they're actually sitting on the back of this boat, and they're looking at the wake of the ship saying, well, my mother dropped me, or I had this experience when I was a child. So they're actually creating their future because of their past, because of where they are in the boat. And so I share this because some people watching this are going like, oh my God, bro, I'm sitting on the back of the boat. I'm using my past to create my future. And this is so many people who are doing this. I mean, like I said, I mean this with so much compassion. Now this is where shadow work comes in because there are many people, they've actually, they're not just sitting on the back of this boat, like looking at the past, like where's the boat going, dude? Like, like where's the boat going? If you're just sitting on the back of the boat. And many people are doing this, but this is where shadow work really comes in. They've thrown an anchor into the water or multiple anchors into the water. And that anchor has hooked onto a rock And so the boat is just going in circles and they're fighting the current and they're sitting on the back of the boat. And they're wondering, why won't my life change? What is going on? And so the first step to come back to your question, I'm done with my picture, by the way, is is that people, when they do shadow work, I lost my pen cap. Okay, I'll find it later. The the people, when they start to actually access these anchors, there's three steps to to working with the shadow, like like you were saying. It's shadow work right? Awareness first of like, something's not right. I'm going in circles. What, why am I not changing? Since you, you haven't acknowledged your shadow, you're not acknowledging the subconscious trauma. You're sitting on the back of the boat, looking at all your trauma from your past. How can you control your future? So awareness first of where you are in that boat and what's going on. So that creates shadow work. So you're acknowledging the shadow. Awareness first, then acknowledging the shadow. This is my unconscious material. You begin to sift into that darkness. And like, I'm talking about this very logically. I'm very talented at explaining this logically. But once you get in there, it is not logical. It's like finding a blob or a shape because it's energy. This is what's weird for people because like we live in a really logical world, but this is not logical. This is intuitive. So it's like it's like melting clocks. It's abstract. And once you get into that space, this is why getting support is so crucial. You start to work with it and you find it. You're like, oh, oh, there it is. Oh my God, that was the trauma. Well, my mother abused me or my dad, my uncle left me or like, like whatever, whatever it is. Like I was, I was physically abused. I was molested when they like, oh my God, there it is. And what's the emotion that I've been repressing. And then as you work with it and you find it, then it starts to shift because it's very dense. It's like, it's very, it's like, it's, it's like, it can be even locked in your body. Like, why am I, my hips stuck? Like, why is that thing on my neck? Like what, where's this thing in my body? Right. And so as you begin to work with that repressed, suppressed or denied density within you, then it starts to shift and start the energy starts to come back and then you start to integrate it. So their shadow work is working with that, that, that dense aspect of the self. Let's say that again, dense aspect of the self that's been repressed. It's like a fragmented aspect of you. 
you start to bring it back online, you start integrating that energy back into your consciousness. And then as we do that, then we move to a shadow awakening. You start to awaken to your fullest potential. This is why getting support is so crucial because it's, like I said, three-step process, shadow work, shadow integration, and then shadow awakening. And I'm, I'm making it sound so simple because it takes a month right. for because it's, like I said, sometimes it's intergenerational. It's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And there's a wide range of tools that I teach people so they can actually, like I said, it's like I'm handing you a shovel. The shovel is a little bit different for different people to dig into that space, right? Because stuff comes up when you're in there, like, because there's your shadow will distract you. Like, oh, like, like your ego doesn't want you to access your shadow. Just stay safe. Just just play it safe. Everything's going to be fine. Just, just just keep drugging yourself. Just, oh, we don't want to touch this pain. No, don't touch the pain. Don't touch, don't, 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 don't touch it. Don't touch it. Just keep watching TV. Oh my God, there's video games. Play video games. Oh my God, there's alcohol. Just don't look at the pain, right? But the people are like, well, something's really off about my life. This is where like we keep pointing the finger. It's that thing. It's that thing. It's the TV. It's COVID. It's that. It's like, but it's like, it's really, once you get honest, like really brutally honest, like there's something that you don't work on within yourself. So then you do the shadow work, then you integrate the shadow, then you awaken your shadow, and then your whole life changes because that gold that you've been suppressing with that energy, you bring it back online. And some, for some people, you love yourself for the very first time because you've been repressing that pain from the abuse, the trauma, the wounds from your childhood. And that's what like, it's like, I'm so passionate about teaching this because like, I've had like, like a few months ago, I, um, I was, had this co other coach do my, do my coaching program. And then, like, she did it, and it takes time. It's different for each person. And, like, a few weeks, like a month ago, I was actually hanging out with her out in uh, Colorado. She's like, Odie, when I went through your program, I didn't realize how much my triggers were running my life. I didn't realize how much my husband was triggering me. Once I started to heal myself and recognize what was going on below the surface in my mind, now I have a better relationship with my husband. I was like, that feels, that's so beautiful. And she's like, and my mom used to trigger me so much. And now she can't trigger me. And I realized when I'm triggering her, so now I have a better relationship with my mom. Because what happens is, is you get in this demon dance with people, people that you love because they have repressed stuff and you have repressed stuff. And you're just triggering each other. And you're just slinging mud. It's just like you get in like, there's that different levels of the brain. Like you have the neocortex, the limbic system and the fight or flight mode of the reptilian brain. And you're just in your limbic system. There's no logic. You're just, yeah, you made me angry. And like, you're just, you're there, you're, you're back in like the childhood wounds and you're just playing this game you're like actors like you wounded me like no you're acting like a five-year-old because sometimes people you get wounded and then you're triggered you fall right back into that being a five-year-old that was wounded and you're doing it unconsciously that's why i love teaching this because once you reckon like oh my god like i'm triggered and you start to fall back in that space you go oh wait a second I've been triggered. Then you calm yourself down. Then you do the breath work. You start to actually, this is where you're rewiring your, your nervous system because your brain gets triggered. You go right back to the same old, like, ah, oh, I have to be, I have to show up as this person because I never healed it. Right. But then you actually, oh, I've been triggered and it slows down a little. That's why the meditation is it slows you down enough. You're like, oh, wait, what's going on here? And then you actually acknowledge it. And then you start to rewire the nervous system instead of falling back into those old beliefs, limiting beliefs, and your shadow popping up and like, like, you know, the people get angry, like, where, where did that anger come from? It's like, oh, why did I get so angry? It's like, you've been suppressing it and you got triggered and the anger came out. That's a big thing that likes that a lot of men struggle with. Like, I work with mostly women. I, like, a lot of my, my female clients, you need to work with men and help them acknowledge their anger and get it out because they get triggered. And when you're in your limbic system, you cannot think logically. I'm going to say that again. When you're triggered, mm -hmm. you can't think logically. When I'm pissed, I, you don't, do you think logically when you're pissed off at someone? No, you don't. But if you realize you've been triggered, then you're like, you'll start to fall into your limbic system and go, Oh, I've been triggered. And then you can like, like, let's not fight right now, Justin. I'm going to go chill out, calm myself down, and we'll come back and actually talk about it. Because otherwise, I'm going to show up as the, the wounded OD five-year-old. I'm going to really, I'm going to project all my anger at you. But it wasn't you, Justin. It was me not acknowledging my own pain. And that's yeah. like hard truth for your ego to recognize that like it's your own pain that you're projecting other people. And I'm not saying this is all situations. Sometimes, you know, someone cuts me off on the freeway. Yeah, I should get a little angry about me. You know what I mean? still, like, but the, the thing is this, anger is not bad. It's not a bad thing. Like, you need to have boundaries. A lot of women struggle with boundaries. You need to say, this is not okay. Okay. But if you repress anger and it turns into rage, that's when you have heart problems. That's when you have blood pressure problems. So that's, there's always a balance here between understanding your masculine and feminine energies within you. It's like, if you're, if you need to have anger to have your boundaries, but if you repress the anger, then it shows up in ugly ways because you get triggered and the anger comes out. Cause like as young, young men were told, don't show off your anger, Johnny. It's not allowed. You keep that anger within yourself. And like, oh, I just want to be loved. So you repress the anger just so you can get love, the love that you really want. And then we repress it more and repress it more. And then, and then it shows 
up in ugly ways, ways later in our life and actually shows up disease, like the ACEs, like you were talking about, because we're suppressing it, suppressing it, denying it. We're not allowed to feel anger. This is a society, society where we don't feel anger, but why are people getting so sick and having liver problems, heart problems? Because like they, they repress it in your liver and it starts showing up in your heart because often in, like we have heart disease, in Chinese medicine, it's usually another organ that's out of balance and it starts showing up in the heart. Or like grief in the lungs. We're holding so much grief in our lungs that our lungs feed our heart oxygen. So then it's showing up in our heart, but it's really our lungs and the, the suppression of the grief that we're not allowing ourselves to feel. So a lot of this is really just digging into ourselves, feeling those repressed emotions so that we can actually heal. I know I'm going off on lots of tangents, but hopefully it's working. <laughs> no, this is good. And in fact, like, I, there's like common threads, you know, there's common themes here that you're repeating over and over. And we need to, we need that because repetition is the mother of learning Yes. and to get it into our subconscious mind. Um, so, and I know we've kind of talked about this uh, off, off uh, camera, but um, I, I've had a lot of repressed anger and that's actually how this whole thing started was I, I had this exercise where I was looking and doing some model work where you're looking into somebody and it's supposed to trigger things. And then all of a sudden I'm just like out of the blue and I'm like feeling all this heat and it, like it was anger it's all this repressed anger just like exploded and i'm like what is going on because i never thought i was an angry person yeah. at all i was like yeah. oh i'm so nice i never get angry mm -hmm. I'm, you know and uh that that was the farthest thing from the truth so with repressed anger I, i'm curious on, on your thoughts on this so um i think there's different schools of thought um there are i guess psychological studies that would say that if you actually like go do something that expresses your anger, you actually get more angry, like hitting punching bag or something. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, I mean, should we, for someone who has repressed anger, should we be finding um, outlets like, I don't know, like a punching bag to really express it? And will that help us integrate uh, our anger? Yeah, so like, like, like personally, I want to, my goal is to start launching retreats next year. Cause I, I really feel like it's good to like do video coaching you reach people, but like getting people in person where I can actually really go deep into this stuff. But, um, like I tell people like when stuff shows up during the day that triggers you, like have a note in your phone, write down what came up for you and then have a journal where you can really like get it out. So you can write down what came up for you. But then in terms of specific physical stuff is, you know, take like a wiffle bat and beat the crap out of a pillow or something. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's the key thing to remember is it's energy. It's repressed energy. Like, like whether it's anger, yeah, you want to be able to physically get the anger out. If it's grief, like a lot of men struggle with allowing themselves to cry, but then, then it shows up disease. So like, like when, for me personally, my, my mother, a few years ago, she was diagnosed with, with, uh, with cancer and she's totally healed. Now she's fine. But like yeah. that made me cry a lot. I was really worried and sad. And, but when I cried, I was like, this is actually a really good thing. I'm going to go so deep into my crying and get this repressed energy out. And I like allowed the emotions to spill out of me. And it was like one of the most cathartic healing things that I've ever done. So it's like when stuff comes up, don't fight it, go with it. And that's kind of like when it comes to like Taoist healing, we're constantly like fighting the stream, fighting the river, go with the flow. And part mm -hmm. of like our society is like, we're fighting ourselves so much. Even our bodies are made up of water. We don't allow ourselves to feel into that space. And so we're fighting the flow within ourselves. And that flow is really our emotions. Like even the word emotion, it's, ener it's emotion, it's energy in motion. If you're fighting your emotions, that's why you're going to have disease because you're not feeling the flow of your emotions and really being in tune with the Tao. Right. And I've been like going way deeper into studying like the like Taoism and ancient wisdom because there's like there's so much ancient wisdom that we like forgot about that we if we just begin applying it, reapplying it to society, we can heal ourselves. Like my essentially my long term goal is to build a tribe of healers. When I say tribe of healers, you do the work to heal your shadow. You do the work like NLP, some of the stuff that you're teaching with with hypnosis, because you're rewiring the nervous system with, with hypnosis or NLP. It's just different styles of doing it is what it's really all yeah. about. And then acknowledging what emotions you're repressing. So that blends with shadow work and hypnosis because it's just energy. You're helping people to rewire their emotions and their nervous system. And that's how we become our own healers. So my, my vision long term is to build a tribe of healers. You do the work, you heal yourself, then people can't trigger you. You know you know when you trigger other people. And this is already working. I'm already getting great results. And it's like, oh my God, is it working better than I thought? And so... So then we, as we heal ourselves, remember, remember the word heal is to make whole. It's recognizing the holes in yourself and filling those holes and really loving yourself, right? Yeah. It's to make whole. You're filling those holes. And that's why we need a tribe. People are stuck at home. And like, personally, I did a lot of work alone. But the more I got out and gotten support from coaches and like shamans and other healers, like they're like, oh, you've done so much great work with yourself. But there's still stuff that you can't see. That's why having a coach or having support, they're going to mirror things and you, you can't see in yourself. Your ego is like, well, I can do it all on my own. It's like, you can do some of it on your own. 
but there's parts you will not be able to do. Like, like when I went to college at San Diego state university, got my degree in kinesiology, we would do stretching. Like, like you could stretch yourself out, Justin. There's no way you can stretch yourself out. If I got you on a massage table, I'm going to get deeper angles. And it's the same thing when it comes to hiring a coach, you can do great stuff on your own. You should do your own work, but there's things that a coach is going to be able to mirror in you and show you that you will not be able to see and be able to go deeper than you can see within yourself. And that's the beauty of having a tribe, having a coach, and getting support. And I really think, especially with COVID, we're all so separated. We need more tribe. We need more community. Yeah. We need more accountability. And that's how we're going to heal the planet by actually coming together when the world is attempting to separate us. Yeah. No, that's that's big. And I know you mentioned um, uh, previously that, you know, just even having a community or a safe person to share with, to share the pain with, because sometimes it's like we're just so ashamed of yes, who we are, what we've done, that we don't feel like we can share and, and um, like what you're saying, the first step is like acknowledging and being able to share. Yes. And through that connection um, that we, you know, really begin to heal. So, yeah, big. I wanted to, all right, let me, let me take the devil's advocate position here. Yeah. Because right? there's some people who, uh, they would be definitely like anti-shadow work. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to steal man. Hopefully I'm re representing them well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not like, I haven't like researched this and like, let me just write out this argument. So let me try to steal me on the argument. Odysseus. So with shadow work, you're digging up things. You're in fact, you're creating this trauma. You're, you're, you're making people focus on all the bad, the anger and the jealousy and the sadness and all these things. And you're really just creating that in them. You're creating people to be quote unquote, you know, traumatized when they're really honestly already whole and they just need to focus on love. Right. Yeah. So I, I love that you're creating polarity there because there, there are people who are like, well, this isn't for me. I don't need shadow work. It's like, yeah. oh, like different coaches call it different things. You know, I've, I've actually shared shadow work with people like oh, I was kind of already doing that just in a different way. But to answer your question, um, a lot of it really comes down to people uh, acknowledging aspects of themselves. And one of the problems in society today, especially with like the spiritual community or people are like, I'm a light worker, all this stuff, is that we're focusing too much on everything is love and light. We shouldn't talk about the bad stuff. But that's actually what's perpetuating the darkness. It's really about the yin and the yang. If you're too much in the light, you're not acknowledging the dark, you're out of balance. And you can go too much into the dark too. It's both sides. So it's really about like in, in Buddhism, which is like, it's really about walking the middle way path, acknowledging the darkness and the light. And so like, I never want to push my opinions or thoughts on anybody. For me, it's really about sharing tools and figuring out what works for you at your level. It's, it's You can't force somebody to heal. You can't force somebody to, to do this work. Some people aren't going to, quote unquote, wake up in this lifetime. And that's okay. It's really about them doing what feels right for them. Because you can't push somebody into shadow work. They have to feel like they're ready to do this work. And it comes back to like what you're talking about. It's like, it's really about not acknowledging what's going to work for you. If you're not ready to do this work, if, it, if it's too deep, that's okay. You know, it's really about... At the end of the day, it's about loving yourself. And if you really don't feel like this is the right thing for you, that's all good. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all about, for us as coaches, it's just having compassion for other people and honoring them wherever they're at, but just having space and, and ha holding space and having the tools for those that are ready. Because some people, they're like, we have family members who are like, I, like, like I love my mom. She's not going to work. She's not going to do shadow work. And that's okay. I can work on myself and me working on myself will help to heal her because I'm not triggered by her that's like i said like with that one client that i work with same thing with me is like me working on myself heals other people around me it's like you become a drop like a ripple affecting everybody around you because some people aren't going to do this work you're 100 percent correct it's too dark the trauma is too deep the pain's too deep and they're not going to examine it that's like some of like i said older generations they're so they're it's like in their dna the trauma they're not going to change and that, like i said it's not good or bad but it's like if you feel like this is the right thing for you and you're ready to do this type of work then do it, go for it, but get some support so that you really know what you're doing because um, that's what's really going to make it a lot easier for you to access the, the, the pain and the wounds. And, and if you don't want to access it and work on it, that's okay too. There's no mm -hmm. pressure because the pre there's, there's no reason to force yourself to do something that doesn't feel right for you. Mm. Now, this is a um, curious question and also kind of on that steel man, uh, the, the devil's advocate side. Is there a point where we you know, we actually heal. Is there a point where the shadow work is done? Like, eh, no more shadow work. We're good. Well, I think it comes back to kind of like exercise. Like you, you, you should be having a regular practice and your rituals create your riches. So sometimes they say it's like new level, new devil. You go, you, you shed one layer and there's something new there. So it's like, I feel like it's a lifelong practice 
because mm-hmm. you can like take breaks, you know, like, like I've, I've meditated like religiously for like, like six months straight. And like, I, like, that was really, when my mother was going through cancer, it was a really difficult time. So I, I was like really on top of my breath with really on top of meditation because it was, I was very fragile during that space of time. Mm-hmm. And so, and then, and then she healed and I wasn't doing it quite as often, but I really feel like it's just like exercise, you know, like working out, you know, you can take a little bit of time off, but you're not going to feel as good. So I think that it comes down to each individual person. Like my, my goal, my goal here is not to like push anybody to do something that doesn't feel right for them, but find the rituals that really make you feel good. And that's, what's really going to be the best thing for any individual person, like test different things out. Like maybe you need to do a regular meditation practice and that's going to help you to keep your nervous system calm, but it's going to be different for each person and really finding what works best for you. But yeah, like the healing journey, it's different for each individual. I think it's really more relative to what's showing up for you because some people they're going to need to do a regular practice and then as you go in on one layer there's another layer and there's another layer but it's less like working out you know like you could take some days off from working out but then you're going to get out of shape you know what i'm saying or you could you can you want to eat healthy generally but you don't have to be, be perfect all the time so i really feel like it's about finding what works best for you and applying what works best for you but at the end of the day your rituals create your riches because i mean there's a lot of people who go out and make lots of money but they're not taking care of their health and then like you make all this money but you're getting sick because you didn't actually do the deeper inner work to actually heal your wounds so it's really relative to each individual and what's showing up for them and the process for what they want to do to honor their own journey and showing up authentically for what feels right for them. Got it. Got it. So for, for you personally, um, in this, this shadow work journey, other than like the, the breath work and obviously we're, we're acknowledging was, is there any like favorite practices or things that really stood out for you in your journey that really helped you, um, integrate your shadow? So, this is a really deep exercise. Like I, like I always believe like as coaches, we have to do the work first yeah. before we teach it to other people. And, uh, I, I did this, um, a few months ago. I've done probably like more healing work in this past year than ever before. Um, it's this ancient Toltec healing exercise where I actually, for 36 days straight, I wore a mask. I wore a V for Vendetta mask. Which is for, <laughs> uh, I wore a mask and I looked into a mirror. And for 30 to 45 minutes a day, for 36 days, I talked about all of my trauma through my entire life. It is the deepest shadow work exercise I've ever done. Like literally just stare, wearing a mask, which is weird, but you're staring into a mirror. Now, what this does is that your unconscious mind begins to disassociate your face with your trauma because you're wearing the mask talking about your trauma. And like I said, excuse me, that's the deepest shadow work exercise I've ever done. It was so healing because like imagine 30, like. 30 to 45 minutes a day talking about all of your trauma. You're getting it out. It's like wiping your wiping your butt, but wiping crap out your head. That's my, that's my way of explaining it. Like all this crap is wiping it out and getting it out because it comes back to the point. Your unconscious mind begins to disassociate your face with the trauma because part of it is it's so integrated integrated into our, our, our physical aspect that we have to actually communicate and talk about it. And then as we like 15 to 20 minutes in, I'm talking about it and you notice this weird shift. Like I can't even put into words like the shift that I felt within myself talking about it and just going deeper and deeper. Like, cause you talk about your trauma, like, Oh, I didn't even think about that. And you start remembering other things that happened when you were a child and you had abuse or like, like instead of my father being gone all the time in Hollywood or like then generational stuff comes up. Cause it's really going so deep into your intuition. That, like I said, it's like, it's like wiping your butt, but you're wiping the crap. That's my, that's my funny way of explaining it. But you're white, you're going so deep and getting all that crap out. And like I said, your crap becomes your fertilizer. Your mess becomes your message. Because one of the things that I love most about teaching shadow work, and this relates to Chinese uh, medicine and Taoist healing, is that the deeper you go into your trauma, the trauma is not good or bad. It's just residual energy. And as you go deeper into it, for many people, it reveals your golden path in life, who you were always meant to be. Sometimes we have, I'm not saying all instances, but sometimes the trauma is something that you needed to go through so that you could figure out who you were meant to be in this lifetime. And that is where like the the most beautiful things about doing this work with other people, because once we dig in there and we find the gold, it shifts your entire life. Like, like I've had people who've done shadow work like six months in, they get a divorce, they change careers. They're like, what was I doing? My shadow was running my life and it was happening unconsciously because I'm giving, I don't like, I've had people like, oh, do you heal me? I don't heal people. I give you the tools to heal yourself. And yeah. as yourself, you find your gold, it actually reveals who you were always meant to be, but it was always within you. We just don't live in a society that talks about these things. And that's why I'm so passionate about creating these groups, creating these tribes, creating, creating, teaching people how to be their own healer because you're finding the gold within yourself. It was always there, but we don't have the, the, 
tribe, the community, and the accountability to do this inner work. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. This is where I feel like, like I said from the beginning, we're moving society. We, are, we live in a trauma-based society, especially right now with COVID. It's so trauma-based. We're moving to a trauma-informed society. Nothing that's happening right now is bad or good. Just recognizing it's trauma-based and going into the trauma, acknowledging it, healing those wounds, and then moving to a trauma-informed society. Because that's where, imagine how people are going to discover their goal because they're forced to face their trauma now. So like I said, it's not bad or good. Like I have such a positive attitude about everything happening right now. We just got to get more tribes coming together and people acknowledging the pain, going into those wounds, and discovering who we're always meant to be healing the intergenerational trauma and imagine how many people we heal the intergenerational trauma how much that would shift the world i think it's such yeah. a beautiful time to be alive that's a great attitude to have that's a great perspective to have yeah it's like no you're right when i think about it we've never been so trauma informed and like up to date in like psychology and and like now these different spiritual practices mm -hmm. which um i would love to if, if you can share any kind of uh I suppose practices. I'm trying to figure out how to articulate this question because you've talked a lot about the the Eastern uh, and Chinese medicine. So what is what exactly does that have to offer when it comes to like emotional healing? So China? the way that I explain it, to put it quite simply, is that like, and, and like I'm talking in a logical place. It's really about tapping into our intuition. We've lost connection to our spirit. We've lost connection to our soul. And that's not a bad thing. It's beautiful because once we acknowledge it and go in there, we'll be able to heal in ways we could have never imagined. But essentially, it's like this. I'm going to do my best to simplify this. Is we are living in a linear reality. It's kind of like my analogy mm -hmm. with the boat. Everyone's just like on the surface. Everything is my past, which is creating my future. They're all past, future, past, future. My past is depression. My future is anxiety. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, what's going to happen? Right? But when we move from the linear model, with the linear model is a is a Newtonian and Cartesian model. Newtonian mean materialistic and Cartesian, dualistic. So we're stuck in this materialistic and dualistic reality. We're like, you and I, Justin, we are completely separate. You are working for your stuff. I'm working for my stuff. And we're in a competition. And I'm going to crush you because this is masculine. The linear reality is masculine, 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 masculine. And then we, the, the key thing, it's not bad or good. We're moving to a quantum model of consciousness. This is one of the first things I teach to people because so many people are addicted to that linear model of consciousness, which isn't bad, right? But it's just Newtonian and Cartesian. People say, well, that's the way it is. No, that's an argument for antiquity. The world has already shifted. We're already in a quantum model. We're just so stuck in this old way of thinking. Now, the quantum model is more feminine. It's more wave-like, okay? Because it comes back to when it's more wave-like, Nothing is either good or bad. Just thinking makes it so. We keep ourselves stuck in that linear model by way of our thinking. When things are bad or good, it can only be based upon your past experience. Like, Justin, that's so bad. Well, why is it bad, Justin? Because I had an experience in my past that makes it appear bad now. But that's not quantum. That's you stuck in the linear model, which isn't bad or good. That's why I, when I coach people, this is so crucial to get this into their head because part of that density of the emotions that are repressed is just them stuck in the linear model and it's so like it's stuck in our heads it's like well i can't change you don't understand i can't change like you're just creating your future based upon your past it's so bad it's so good how could it be bad or good only based upon your past that's your ego addicted to who you think you are justin you could be an entirely different person in six months especially like for you implementing your, your hypnosis practice right with, the, with the, yourself or other people you've changed a lot because you start to acknowledge i'm not my past right and we and sometimes we project our past into our future. Well, it's going to be like this forever. And then you create, you're creating anxiety and depression. When we operate from the quantum model, I love to say the word now backwards is one. We're winning. We've won because we're so in tune with the moment. So to answer your question, we tap into our intuition and our spirit. We actually are so in tune with the moment that we begin to access that quantum model of consciousness. Imagine a tree with an infinite number of branches moving in every different direction. There's, then we have infinite possibility available to us, but we can't access that when we're stuck in that linear model of consciousness. Now, I'm not saying it's good or bad. We really have to operate between those two models. This is where I feel that society is actually shit. We've already shifted in the quantum model. Just there's so many people around us who are addicted to the linear model. But we got to be able to oscillate from the feminine, which is more quantum, and the masculine, which is more linear. But we're able to balance those two out. That's where we're going to have infinite happiness because we still need to know what happened in our past. But our past doesn't create our future. It comes back to this model here where people are stuck like mm. 
like looking at their past saying, well, well, like how are you creating your new future if you're still stuck in your past and you're anchored into the past? You're going to keep reliving your trauma. You're going to attract more abusive people into your life. You're not going to show up authentically. You're going to project your wounds on other people. And it's not bad or good. It's like the fact that I'm talking about this, you like you can't make people change. They have to take your words and go, I am traumatized by my past. I am projecting my stuff onto other people. I am really wounded. But the acknowledgement allows you to create the awareness to go into that space actually heal yourself and then you begin to create the massive shift because then you start shifting to the quantum model of consciousness is this making sense yeah this reminds me i mean it sounds like a lot like um you know going into man what do you call wow now i'm blanking but it's like the oneness and acceptance yes. it's all about accepting that which is being in the present moment it's very eastern um and it reminded me because you said something you said that I could become whatever I could, you know, whatever I want in the next six months or however long. And that's anybody. Yeah. And you reminded me, you know, we cannot deny, or we, sorry, we can deny that I am this or I am not this, but we, what we can't deny is that I am. And I think if we come back to the, just, we're just awareness, mm -hmm. then that's like, we're no longer attached to the ego or self-concept, whatever material, you know, materialistic uh, concept of ourselves. But then we can start to really change because we're not our thoughts or our feelings. So that's what you reminded me of. Yeah. Well, it's like I said, we're like, this is such an important thing. People like this is where we're unconscious. We're unconscious to how addicted we are to the Newtonian and Cartesian model. Everything is material and everything is dual. We're all, yeah. and this is where it's more spiritual. We're all connected. Our nervous systems. We, I feel like when you're around other people, you feel their energy. When you see someone fall and hurt themselves, you kind of feel it. That's because we're all connected. And that's not, that's the opposite of the Cartesian and Newtonian model. It's when we're in that quantum model of infinite, po infinite possibility. And that's where we, like, the go our goal as coaches is to get people in that space. Like when you're teaching hypnosis or I'm working with people with NLP, we just have different tools we give people. But it's rewiring people because they're so addicted to who they were in the past, they can't show up in person. The word person in Greek is persona. It means mask. A lot of the work that we're doing is taking off the mask and go, that's who I've been. Oh my God, it's a personification. It's a mask that I wear in society based upon my past reality. And when we can acknowledge that mask, that personification, then we can actually look deeper into ourselves to discover who we really are deeper below the surface. And that's the mm -hmm. beauty of that. That's why I love coaching and teaching this stuff. Because every some people are harder, they're more dense, they're more stuck. That's okay. I, I love working with those people and supporting them. But it really comes down to the point sometimes, sometimes you gotta have enough pain that you actually change. Sometimes people they have to get cancer and they go, Oh my God, like I need to change something. You know, they like have like a wound or something that shows up, like I got to actually change. And then it actually triggers the change. So it just depends on the person. So I want to reach people before it gets that intense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the beauty is that I love sharing this is like, we have all the tools in front of us. It's just that it's like below the surface. Like I don't want to look at that stuff. It's just sitting there below the surface. It's sitting there in our subconscious mind. When we learn to utilize our subconscious. Like it's like, instead of fighting your emotions, you use your emotions and your emotions right. take you to you where you're always meant to go. And it's just, it's just that you, you're fighting yourself internally. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm still working on myself too, man. It's like, I'm still working on this stuff. Right. But the more I share with people, we're actually healing the collective consciousness. When we heal ourselves, we're healing the collective consciousness because the more, that's why I'm so passionate about this. The more people we get doing this work, we're already shifting from trauma based to trauma informed. So the more you do the work, so I love sharing these tools. You heal yourself, then your fan, you heal your family, you heal your genera generations, you start healing your coworkers because they can't mess with you because you healed your shadow. Like you're projecting your shadow on me, bro. That's not cool because you have better boundaries. A lot of like a lot of women that I coach, they struggle with boundaries based upon past trauma. Once you learn how to utilize anger instead of like repressing your anger, then you can start showing up more authentically. And that's why I, like, I love talking about this stuff, man. It's, it's like yeah. it's gold because everyone has we have gold inside of us. I think it was I'm going off on tangents, but. <laughs> The book Think and Grow Rich, right? I've read that oh, book, I love that book five times. It said there has been more gold mined from the mind of man than any mind in the world because the gold is within us. You can like, like I'm going to take a piece of paper and write a business plan that makes a multi-billion dollar business. If you don't believe that, that, that's quantum thinking, bro. Like you can create something out of thin air because your mind is operating from that quantum model. If you're stuck in your past, like it's just a piece of paper. I can't do anything. But I'm so traumatized. What will I do? It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to make it funny, but like we can create whatever we desire. We have that gold within us. And that's why I love shadow work because when you get people to access it, then boom, the entire reality shifts because they've honored who they're always meant to be. Yo, last question. So you've talked about, you know, this world is a mirror as within, so without, mm -hmm. and talking about the quantum model, 
and how we can create our lives. So I don't know if you have like a personal story where, you know, you, you've healed something, you shifted something internally and the outside world shifted. Is there any like cool stories like that for you? Yeah. So like I have a, I have a good simple one. Um, so years ago, like I opened my first gym and it was like my dream when I was a teenager. Like I want to open gyms. Like I, I just, the coolest thing is help people to heal through connecting with their bodies and exercise. And I got my degree in nutrition and kinesiology and all these certifications. And I opened my gym when I was about 25 years old. I was like living my dream. It was like, like amazing, like manifesting my dreams. And then I had opened a second gym. I really like, I, I want like my goal is to reach more people with this stuff because I love teaching. And I was like, I remember the linear model. I was so in the linear model that I didn't realize some of my own trauma was actually affecting me because I was so stuck in the middle. I'm like, I'm telling people, like, I was there too. You know, like a lot of us coaches, you're teaching people stuff that you went through years ago. And so I was so like, I was like so much in my master. I got to make it happen. I was so externally oriented. It's like, ah, I got to, I got to do it. Like I was so hard on myself and I just, all these emotions and all of a sudden I was like, this isn't working. And I started studying more Eastern philosophy, getting more in touch with my spirit, started just meditating, calming myself down. I was like relaxing, calming my nervous system down, getting very chill. And then six months later, one of my clients came to me, she said, Oh, do you want to help me open another gym? And I was like, bro, that was so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and, like, and I opened the second gym and I doubled my income. And I was, I was like, this is like, like I was fighting myself. I was like, I was fighting my emotions. I was stuck in the linear model, just like I'm teaching you guys yeah. and on myself down because I was operating more from the quantum. And then it just, cause like, masculine energy is electric it's not bad or good but it's very like external right feminine energy is magnetic and a magnet you can't see the properties that draw two magnets together it's invisible right mm -hmm. what, what makes two magnets connect you can't see it it's like magic it's magnetic they connect so when we really calm ourselves down through you men and for you women some women are out of touch with their feminine too when you calm your nervous system down then you can start to work with the invisible internal intuitive aspects that magnetize the reality that you've always deserved. And like I said, that story is a perfect example. I use that story because I was too much in my masculine and when I calmed myself down and got really in touch with my feminine, boom, then everything shifted and I opened my second gym and it was almost effortless and I doubled my income and I started reaching more people. And so, yeah, that, that's like, yeah, like, man. Oh, it just shifted. I was like, I'm so in my head, get out of my own head and feel my heart and feel my emotions. And then boom, it shifted because I was, instead of fighting my emotions, I helped, I, I worked with my emotions and then just kind of manifested for me almost effortlessly. Awesome. Well, Odysseus, that is an amazing story, and that inspires me, man. Hopefully that inspires people who watch this. And uh, how can people get in contact with you if they want to work with you? So um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm kicking off my uh, group coaching program in a couple weeks. So if you're interested in doing my group coaching, it's one, my goal is to do like a more affordable group program where I'm, tr I'm training a tribe of healers. That's the goal. I have a video course, and then I'm launching retreats next year. My website is odysseymentorship.com, odysseymentorship.com. You can also check me out on Instagram, uh, od1kenobi21 uh, uh, on Instagram. I actually have a camper van named od1kenobi. My, my dad was uh, my dad filmed Revenge of the Jedi back in the day, so wow. I got a little, little Jedi background. Um, but, uh, but yeah, or call me, check, text me, 415-577-4511. You want to connect. I'm so passionate about teaching this work. Like I said, the vision is to build a tribe of healers. My vision is to work with other coaches. Like a lot of mothers hire me because they don't want to pass their trauma on to their kids. I want to teach you how to do the work to heal yourself. And I want to I want to have a system where you can actually take my system and then go build your own tribe. And that way we work with more people in the world. We heal the planet and go home. Yeah, dude. I love that. I'm glad you you said that because I almost <laughs> forgot about that quote. Heal the world, go home. That's the plan, man. Heal the planet, yeah. go home. You know what I'm saying? Let, let, let's, let's do the work. Let's heal the planet. Let's get out of here. Let's go have some fun. Yeah, man. Odysseus, this has been awesome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. Absolute Appreciate pleasure. It. All right, guys. Remember to heal the world. Go home. Peace out. Peace.